Hey everybody, welcome to episode 27. I'll put it down here. When I left off in the last episode, I had disclosed that I had uh, given notice on my Boeing job. That's all behind me now. I've done my first two-week shift up in Bethel, Alaska. Did my training, check ride, initial operating experience, spent about a week and a half flying. It was a good one day we completely weathered out some more, two more days where uh, part of the day we couldn't fly, or at least I couldn't. Uh, no big deal. It was a lot of fun. Other days, like clear up to the last day when I flew out of town, uh, I flew my butt off. As many as uh, eight flights, 15 landings, something like that. A couple good ones. Anyway, the 207 is a lot more fun to fly than I thought it was going to be empty it's kind of a hot rod full started my car and that's saying something and on the other end you put in six passengers a lot of crap airplane takes off a lot of fun i did manage to get a little bit of footage came out pretty poorly so i grabbed a bunch of mounts for this time tried the forehead cam learned what does and what doesn't work maybe got a few seconds i'll shotgun some of it up here i did take a bunch of still pictures with my phone uh came out pretty good there'll be lots more to follow and so having two weeks off was pretty cool. I have never had two weeks off in a row in my entire life. So of course I wasted about two thirds of it. And then a couple days ago, I came back out to the hangar and wanted to get working on this airplane. Got to get something done before I go back for my next two weeks, which is uh, Monday. I got, I don't know, four, four or five days. So I decided to make some racks basically to store these wings up high on the stud walls of the hangar. I'll take you for a walk here in just a second. In fact, we may as well do that right now. Uh, again, this is my old junk wings that came with the airplane. I've got a plan now for these things. And here's the flap rons. These are my bad ones and the good ones behind here. And so this is the first rack I've made uh, to go up here. And I'll show you how I made them. It's pretty simple. So what I'm doing is basically make this crutch that'll straddle the stud on the stud wall then i can shoot a screw in from either side this is going to be the diagonal support which will go this way yes that's just a rough stud i don't really care it's plenty strong for this purpose and then of course i'm a engineer and not a carpenter so the way i attack the problem is to use essentially a pin connected structure which is uh first semester engineering Basically, that's going to just straddle a stud. I get a level on this piece, shoot a screw into the stud up on the top, and then I bump this up and down with a level on it until this is tucked in. Then I shoot another screw down below. I am not as worried about the angle necessarily being exact as I am about the two uh, beams, we'll call them, being uh, level and also level themselves. So they're good and square and then everything connected. So these black screws are fairly short or enough to get everything tacked in. And then I came in with some three inch to uh, shoot those in and get some more strength. So that's why that looks a little funny. And I didn't really get around to showing it. Uh, in the last video I was busy organizing. So this is my big roll around chest. There's my aircraft specific roll around chest, which will actually roll around now instead of being tucked into the corner of my one car garage. And then I took all my hardware, uh, rivets and so forth. Got that up here. I never explained this before, kind of method to my madness. Now, of course, if you're building a brand new kit fox, you're going to organize everything exactly the way they say to keep everything itemized by the job. But if you're like me and everything came in a bunch of random tubs, smart thing to do is grab all your hardware and put it together. And so I actually learned an idea a zillion years ago while working in the kayak industry about randomizing things. So this is uh, AN3, and then you see I have a dash star three, so the asterisk being a wild card. So this is gonna be a three, a 13, a 23, 33, whatever it takes. We'll all go in here. That way I don't have to have uh, 55 different bins. So any AN4 dash something four, it's gonna go in here. I just happen to have two bolts in there right now. Um, anyway, get the idea. Save me some space. These are mostly cotter pins, a bunch of rivets, a bunch of other weird hardware, some stab trim stuff, control rod ends, flap bearings, you can read. Uh, this is a super handy tool if you don't have one of these. 
you're missing out. This enables you to get a diameter and a length on AN hardware. Anyway, so that's going to store one wing. It's going to be my, I always do this wrong, right or left wing. Anyway, so I'm going to put the fuel tank of one wing leading edge towards the stud wall. And it actually comes to about here somewhere. And so the second one, I'm going to stagger a little bit low. So that means it's time for me to disposition these scrap wings right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them off, cut off this piece of spar where the uh, fuel tank would go. And I'm going to hang them up over there and put lights on them. Just seemed a shame to take them to the landfill and scrap them out. Anyway, so I got uh, this one made. This one is ready to install, but my next trick right now is going to be to take those wings off the wall. I'm going to drag the airplane outside. It was raining just a little bit. But the thunderstorms today, I think they've mostly passed over. I spent about two days out here in the hangar. Got my projects done for storing the wings. Obviously, I haven't taken the wings off yet. That'll be next project. Uh, one of the things I had to do, I think I mentioned it before, was I have to take those old junk wings that I can't use and move them so that I could build a rack to put uh, these wings. So what I did is I got out my saw and I cut off the wing spars about the number three rib and hung them up here. So I'm gonna put some Christmas lights or outdoor lights of some kind on there. This is just the preliminary rigging. They are level and they're pretty much where I want them. So we've got a little bit of living space underneath here. And over here you can see the bunks that I made for wings to the right and left. And see the angles are a little bit funny. They're plenty strong. What was important to me was that they be level and level to each other. They're within 0.1 degrees. So again, an engineer, not a woodworker. And found a place to stash the tubes and the old stringers, which I have no use for. And then of course my new Series 7 elevator. And speaking of the tubes, this one right here, which I have already cut and allodyned, is the one that's supposed to be on the bottom of the fuselage. The old Series 5 you're supposed to use. Uh, one of these wood pieces. But again, belly of the airplane, it's gonna collect water. I don't have any faith that that's gonna last very long, so I'm converting to the aluminum tube. I have that fit, but obviously it's not a place, so before I can cover the bottom, I have to do that. And then uh, another side project. So when I was over visiting Geek, that's Gary Fenning in Leavenworth, Washington, uh, I looked at his airplane. He had done a real good job of fairing this in because I'm gonna have some kind of a wrinkle in the fabric. In fact, it's kind of sharp there. That wouldn't work out very good at all. So I have to uh, produce some kind of uh, filler in here, which is gonna make that transition go better. Uh, so that's another side project I have to do before I get too excited about covering. Don't know that I'm gonna have time to do this because we're headed over to Efreda, gonna mess with the yak a little bit and watch an aerobatic show. Then Monday morning, I fly back to Alaska for my next shift. I'll be gone for two weeks. When I come back, I'll be all about getting this done. I just need somebody to help me get those wings up on the rack up there. And I did use a pipe insulation foam to cover those bunks, provide a little bit of padding. If anybody knows of a reason that where I should not use that stuff, I should put something else on top of it uh, to keep it from sticking to my covering and making a mess out of that. Please let me know in the comments below because uh, something just seemed too easy and possibly it is. Anyway, I did come out here to work today. Showed up and my hangar neighbor over here with the Cessna 195 asked me if I wanted to go over to Puyallup with him, uh, buy some oil. So I jumped on that chance. Uh, nice flying airplane. I got to fly back to the takeoff, flew back here, got us as close as short final and handed it back over. Uh, cool airplane, pretty heavy as you might understand. Uh, has a reputation for being a little bit squirrely. The controls are pretty sensitive. Uh, we probably would have lived. I don't think I would wreck the airplane or anything, but it's always nice to uh, defer to the guy who owns it. Anyway, a lot of fun. So as I said, when I get back after this next two-week shift, this thing's going to get flipped over. i got to catch up with Gary, who's already covering the bottom of his fuselage. I probably should have done something to slow him down, but uh, just kidding. I already got some ideas on a table uh, where I can lay out the covering material and trim it. And looking forward to getting that done. So we'll see you in a couple weeks. Take care.